Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take you for a short cross up the Nile River beyond the frontiers of Roman Empire into the region which is called Upper Nubia. Uh, louder. louder, okay. Uh, Upper Nubia is today uh, part of northern and central Sudan uh, and most of the permanent modern and historical settlement was organized around the fertile uh, uh, Nile River uh, valley. In the past, in the first millennium BC, this region was part of Kushite Empire, which was fighting with the Romans in the first, millennium, uh, first century BC, around Aswan and in the southern parts of the, uh, of the Roman uh, uh, Imperium. And they were uh, the last kings who were buried under the pyramids. This long tradition uh, was ended in the middle of the 4th century AD with the last Kushite king to be buried in one of the, under one of the pyramids uh, in one of the cemeteries in Meroe. Researchers are uh, currently debating why the uh, Kushite empire collapsed but we know from written sources that from 4th to 6th century AD, new kingdoms were organized in the former territory of the Kushite Empire. And in Upper Nubia we have Makuria uh, in the north, one of the Nubian kingdoms with the capital in Dongola, and Alwa or Alodia in the south with the capital uh, in, in Soba. Uh, the first kings at the beginning of, of the Nubian kingdoms, they started to introduce uh, fortifications for a massive scale. P before, uh, the Kushites were also using uh, fortified sites, but not in so much, not, not in uh, that kind of quantity. Uh, medieval rulers of, of, of Nubia uh, create, built plenty of that kind of sites uh, in the entire Middle Nile Valley, and uh, that kind of sites have been in inhabited for many centuries, even after the end of medieval period and until the end of 19th century. In this uh, paper and in my uh, current project, I'm focusing on the beginnings of this, let's say, phenomenon of the fortifications in the Middle Nile Valley. And uh, in the large group of fortifications which were built at the beginnings, and there is a smaller group of 10 sites, you can see plans and satellite images of all of them, uh, and they cover approximately 550 kilometers of the Nile Valley. Uh, some of them have been uh, mapped and most of them have been surveyed. Only a few have been partly excavated. Uh, however, researchers suggested that uh, they have been built uh, by early kings of, of Nubian kingdoms, uh, especially the kings residing in Soba. However, there were few researchers such as, who suggested earlier date uh, of these sites. They suggested that they were built by last kings of Kushite to protect the last center of the Kushite uh, Imperium and the last territories of the Kushites organized around it. In my pro current project, I'm uh, focusing on the southernmost sites, those three uh, regular forts, uh, which are not far uh, from the confluence of the White and Blue Nights. Uh, we are aiming to obtain new information on the subject, and our aims are to answer questions who and when built the chain of these regular forts. Uh, the forts that we are investigating are not far from the largest urban centers of modern Sudan, and that's why they are in constant threat. You can see the example of, of the destruction down to one of the forts. Um, uh, here you have the remains of the fort, and it was recently cut by uh, this approximately 10 meter wide channel. For the first glance, I think that you notice that the Nubian forts are quite similar to Roman fortifications. We don't have to look far for examples. In Egyptian 
uh, eastern desert you can find plenty of Roman fortifications, especially small and medium-sized forts. Uh, here are some of the examples. They were placed there to safeguard the trade roads, the mining sites and the harbors on the Red Sea coast. Uh, when we look at the bigger picture, the red dots are the Nubian forts. Uh, this is the place where the southernmost port of Roman Empire Berenike is located. And just a few kilometers south we have Wadi Kalalat. The name of the Wadi comes from two forts which are located in that area. They have been uh, surveyed and excavated in 1990s by uh, team directed by Stephen Seidbotram, who suggested the date 1st to 2nd and 3rd century for the larger fort, and the second fort should be, according to the uh, excavators, a bit younger, from 3rd and 4th century. The distance between those forts and Nubian forts is approximately 530 kilometers, and when we look and when we try to compare dimensions of those forts and layout, uh, this is the larger fort in Wadi Kalalat, this is the largest of the Nubian forts in Hoshel Cup already mentioned. So you can see that the Nubian fort is a bit bigger than the, than the Roman fort. However, there is a similarities in proportion of the curtain walls. Uh, in the next month I would try to uh, compare it in more details, but I'm waiting for the original documentations for exca from excavations in the Roman forts. But I think that is an interesting subject to follow. Uh, the second similarity between the Nubian and Roman forts is the use of space inside of the fort. Inside of the forts. In case of Nubian uh, forts, when excavated, researchers came across a chain of chambers built against the inner faces of the walls. Uh, in January this year uh, we found that kind of uh, chain of chambers using geophysical methods in Hoshel Cup Fort. Uh, it's visible here in the southern part of the site and also fragmentary in the northern part. We made a trench in one of the places and recorded a uh, mud brick structure uh, confirming uh, our uh, hypothesis. Uh, there are also some other, some differences between Roman and, and Nubian forts, and the first of all is uh, the use of vertical masonry technique in the construction of Nubian forts. You can see uh, in the faces of the walls the stones are put in the upright position. Uh, it's not comparable to a uh, Roman opus picatum or a uh, heritage pattern. It's, it's, it's a bit different technique. Uh, uh, I hope that you see uh, the difference. And I never saw vertical masonry in Roman fortifications. If you have seen any examples, please do let me know. But uh, Kushite architecture, especially the large walls built by Kushites, have that kind of uh, masonry technique in use. So it seems that it, this might be a quite indigenous, uh, local way of constructing large enclosures. When it comes to chronology, only few sites have been excavated uh, in part, and only from three we have a combination of uh, analysis of small finds and uh, C14 dates. And the first of them is uh, Mikaisir, which was excavated by German team from Humboldt University. They provided seven dates uh, ranging from 4th to 7th century AD, uh, but most of the uh, C14 samples uh, gave uh, dates from 5th to 6th century. Small finds give a, a bit wider time span from, from the 2nd to 6th century. The research uh, by us, Hoshel Cup, provided pottery mostly from later periods, from 16th to 19th century. Only few shirts were from 7th to 9th century, and we collected some of the samples, and three samples from the lowest occupation levels give, gave us 5th to 7th century of the uh, date, uh, dating the occupation. The last occupation phase was, was dated by this sample, it, it can be somewhere around 19th century. Um, 
The second fort, uh, which was excavated by us in this year, it's Abu Nafisa. It's not far from Khosher Cup, and C14 dates from the lowest levels gave us the dates from of, again dates from fifth to seventh century. Uh, the small finds from Abu Nafisa are very particular. Uh, most of the pottery that we recorded is late, from 16th to 19th century. Only these small beads uh, indicated and confirmed the, uh, the chronology uh, indicated by, by C14 dates. The last of our forts uh, was previously researched by O.G.S. Crawford in 1950s. And he made a survey there and indicated very early chronology of this site. So he, he, he stated that it, he found some Meroitic pottery on the, on the site. Meroitic is more or less, okay. Uh, Meroitic period is more or less uh, similar with the construction of the forts uh, uh, by Romans in the Eastern Desert. However, in 1970s, a uh, team from University of Hartum uh, made some excavations and stated that the, the fort should be dated from the 4th and even from the 5th century onwards. Uh, during this season we made a brief survey and recorded Neolithic, Post-Meroitic, Christian, Funch and Modern Pottery. We didn't record any Meroitic Pottery. Actually on any site we didn't record any Meroitic Pottery, so it seems that the forts are a bit later, a bit younger, m more younger uh, than the Roman forts built in the uh, eastern desert. So to conclude, there are some similarities and differences between uh, the Roman and, and, and Nubian forts. And in case of similarities, we can say that they, are, they have a, a similar layout and size and most probably function. And in terms of differences, the construction technique, especially the vertical masonry, which appears to be local construction technique, and chronology. The Nubian fort seems to be a bit younger than, uh, than uh, the Roman forts. So, for the end, I, uh, I would like to share with you my conclusions uh, that it's very interesting uh, to think about the knowledge that the people who were asked to build the Nubian forts had to have, because from one side they had a local perspective and lo knowledge of local uh, construction techniques, and from the other side they had uh, knowledge about foreign fortifications, the Roman forts. So my question is, how common was the, uh, that kind of knowledge in that time? Was it a single person who designed those forts, or a group which was combined from local experts and foreign experts? And with this question, I would like to thank you for your attention.